Okay, so thank you uh, everyone for joining the uh, uh, webinar session today. Um, uh, I'm Catherine Dykes and I'm from DTU Wind Energy. Um, I uh, have been working in the area of systems engineering and optimization applied to wind energy applications uh, for about uh, 15 years. Um, I was at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in the US for almost 10 years and then came to DTU uh, two years ago now. Um, one of my responsibilities is I am a co-operator for IEA Wind Task 37, which is on wind energy systems engineering. Uh, I co-operate the task uh, at DT Wind Energy along with colleagues at NREL, uh, Garrett Barter, um, and also Carl Mertz, who's at Sintef in Norway. Um, so today I'm going to be providing an overview of the task, uh, what we're about, um, for those who are not familiar. So um, really our goal is to support the uptake and use of systems engineering um, in the best possible way for wind energy applications. So trying to get methods out to industry. Um, a secondary goal is we're trying to demonstrate the value that systems engineering and multidisciplinary optimization can have for improving wind energy system performance and reducing costs. Um, we really seek to target in the end uh, uh, both the manufacturers as well as the developer owner operators within the industry uh, for wind energy. And we are now in our second phase. So we started the task in, in 2016 and had our first three year phase and now we're in phase two, um, which uh, is running from this year through 2022. Um, in terms of uh, country participation, uh, I mentioned that the US, Denmark, and Norway are the co-operators for the task. Uh, we also have participation from Spain, uh, the Netherlands, Germany, the UK, and China. And actually France is in the process of uh, officially joining the task. So uh, we've been working with France Energy Marine and IFPN uh, to actually uh, formalize France's uh, participation in the task. And the great thing about that is that um, uh, organizations then within France are able to participate in our task activities. So we look forward to having more engagement um, from French organizations uh, uh, going forward. Uh, we have four work packages. Uh, so the first work package is really about how do you get models to talk to each other and have uh, uh, common representations of wind energy systems, both the turbine and the plant level. Uh, so that we can uh, more easily collaborate in this highly multidisciplinary space that is wind energy. How can we pass information across uh, different disciplines and across organizations uh, to promote uh, the, the systems engineering practices? Um, in work package two, then, we look at creating reference systems for wind energy, both at the turbine and the plant level. Um, and this is meant to uh, support uh, common research uh, and also, again, collaboration, uh, both uh, within the research side as well as the industry side for looking at um, how do we improve system design and performance. In Work Package 3, we actually have case studies in multidisciplinary, uh, multidisciplinary design analysis and optimization for wind energy. And then in Work Package 4, this is a new work package in this phase. Uh, we've just started it. Um, is about expert workshops on specific topics related to um, the state of the art in uh, multidisciplinary optimization for wind energy. So uh, I'll share a little bit about the activities in each of the work packages. Um, so work package one, as I mentioned, is, is on uh, frameworks and, and data formats for uh, sharing information for multidisciplinary uh, analysis and optimization for wind energy. Um, and what that has uh, created as a deliverable is, is an ontology. Uh, so an ontology is a somewhat complex uh, term. Um, it means essentially a taxonomy that also uh, captures relational information. So we're looking at passing information throughout the system from one discipline to the next. So from a turbine perspective, from the uh, uh, turbine aerodynamic design to the structural side, to the controls, et cetera. And so how do we do that in a standard way? so that we can communicate better across all these disciplines. At the plant level, that means from the resource side 
to the actual uh, um, the design layout side to potentially the electrical collection system side. So how are we passing information again throughout the system? Um, the uh, all of the uh, output from the task is publicly available, and um, we have a GitHub site. Uh, IEA Win Task 37, where we actually have the initial release of this ontology for the turbine level um, available for use already. Um, we're working on the extension right now of that uh, of that ontology at the turbine level to the floating platform side, um, and there's an active effort uh, in, involved in that process, so that's underway now. And we're also working on the the plant uh, version of the ontology as well, and that should be uh, released uh, in this coming year. Um, the second work package, again, is on reference systems. Uh, so a big uh, uh, activity this year was the development and release of a new uh, 15 megawatt reference wind turbine, specifically targeting um, large-scale floating uh, wind turbines. And so that was a collaboration between DTU and NREL and actually others as well, University of Maine and uh, the Core Wind EU project. Um, and so we've now released uh, formally the, the turbine description for the 15 megawatt, and there's uh, multiple floaters now being developed uh, for, the, uh, for the turbine as well that will also be publicly available. So all the detailed design information that you need for these turbines are available so that they can be taken and used uh, by everyone in, in the research and industry community. So this was really a, a, a big accomplishment this year and, and got a lot of uh, attention from the press as well. We also have two other turbines that were released in the last couple of years, uh, a IEA wind 10 megawatt turbine, um, and also a land-based low wind speed 3.4 megawatt turbine as well. And all the detailed design information for the turbines is again available on our GitHub site, including the representation of the turbines in the ontology. So as, as uh, organizations start to adopt the ontology, and have their tools be able to communicate it with it, then the reference designs are also in that format so that they can be used uh, broadly. Uh, we also have activities on uh, 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 reference uh, wind, wind plants. So um, when you're talking about looking at uh, 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 trying to innovate, not just at the turbine, but the plant level, then having a good baseline, a reference baseline is important. Um, and so we started with a offshore uh, uh, wind park um, in using the Borsala site, uh, Borsala 3-4, uh, phase 3-4 site in uh, the Netherlands. Um, collaborated with TU Dell, Sintef, uh, NREL, and OR Catapult on this. Um, and so performing the integrated design of the layout uh, collection system and also the preliminary sizing of the monopile foundations. And then uh, in a subsequent step, doing more detailed design of the monopiles, the collection system, and also uh, looking at the full installation operations and maintenance strategy. Um, we're now uh, talking about the uh, uh, next generation of reference wind plant uh, to go along with the new 15 megawatt turbine for floating applications. And we're looking at collaborating with this uh, new task on floating uh, wind rays that Nicholas mentioned. Uh, on uh, the development of reference uh, floating wind, wind farm as well. Work package three uh, is uh, uh, looking at case studies. So um, uh, how do we actually do uh, design of wind farms taking into account the, the highly multidisciplinary nature, so multidisciplinary uh, optimization? Um, so we've now gone through uh, uh, two rounds of case studies. Um, the first uh, phase, um, uh, or, or set two sets of case studies actually, case studies one and two, um, were really uh, very contrived, highly simplified problems in order to um, kind of get the process going, get the uh, um, participants able to uh, use common codes and, and be able to share results. And so, uh, you know, very contrived problems. So simplified AEP optimization um, with constraints on the perimeter and minimum spacing between turbines. So that was the first two uh, phases. Um, so again, a very, very simple study. Um, but even with the very simple study, we saw a wide variety of different types of approaches using different types of optimization techniques, both gradient-based and gradient-free types of uh, methods. 
and a, a wide uh, a range of, of differences in terms of the ultimate results. And so um, there was a then subsequent activity to discuss the findings and dig into um, what uh, about the uh, optimization approaches drove uh, the differences in the results. And so that's really what the task is about, trying to get an in, in-depth uh, exploration into you know, how the different practices that you can use in optimization will actually affect the outcome of the designs you get. We are now currently in uh, um, the second uh, round of case studies where what we're trying to do is uh, introduce more complexity, more realism uh, with each round of case studies. So um, going from the very simple circular boundary, highly contrived example, we're already in this round introducing a lot more realism, um, both concavities, so non-uniform boundaries, um, as well as exclusion zones, which um, if you do optimization, you know that this already introduces uh, quite a bit of complexity um, because uh, you get all these uh, uh, discrete uh, things and discontinuities and all these sorts of things that optimizers don't like. And so um, there can be a wide uh, range of different approaches to solving these types of complex optimization problems. And indeed, the participants um, uh, have actually taken a, a a large range of different types of approaches. So um, we're right in the thick of looking at the uh, results uh, from the participants and comparing the um, uh, comparing the, the ways the, the problem was approached. Um, so we don't have the, the results to share. We actually, in our annual meeting last week, um, our internal meeting shared uh, internally some, some results from this. Uh, IFPEN has been a, an active participant in this uh, in this round of case studies from France, so that's great. Um, and so we should have a, um, a, a journal paper and a public presentation on the results of this study uh, coming up in the, the next uh, uh, several months here. And um, then we'll be looking at a next round of, of case studies where we introduce yet another layer of complexity. And there's been discussion about uh, including the collection system side, um, which is of course a, a really important part of the overall uh, design process, and I think we'll hear more about that um, later in this uh, in this panel. The last uh, work package is expert workshops. So um, one thing about these uh, case studies is, as I mentioned, we're doing stepwise uh, increases in the amount of complexity, which means we're still quite far away from what are really realistic design problems that those of us who are really actively working in the space are are already working on in terms of both our research and commercial practice. So the workshops are meant to give a space where we can actually um, really kind of uh, talk about what is the state of the art in a given problem. Um, so uh, the first workshop we had uh, was looking at actually how can you use LIDAR assisted control to influence the turbine design process. So this was on the turbine side of our task. Um, and we brought together two tasks, IEA Win Task 32, which is on LIDARs, and our own task on systems engineering to talk together about what is the state of the art in LiDAR assisted control? What is the state of the art in turbine design? And how can we link these two things? How could we improve turbine design through using LiDAR assisted control techniques? So we've completed that one this uh, past year and we're going to have a upcoming then uh, workshop uh, on uh, the plant side, looking at going from, we had reference turbines to reference plants to now reference energy systems. And we're doing that in collaboration with the grid integration task, task 25, and also the cost of energy task, task 26. So uh, we have uh, uh, various meetings. And again, uh, as France is becoming a formal member of the task, uh, we look forward to inviting uh, um, more organizations from uh, France to get involved. Uh, we have an annual meeting every year. We just had our annual meeting last week uh, for this year, so our next one should be sometime in the spring or fall of 2021. We also, every other year, hold a big wind energy systems engineering workshop that has over 100 participants, uh, about half from industry, half from research, talking about what's going on uh, in wind energy systems engineering state of the art. Um, yeah, a little bit more on what we're at to uh, in the coming term, uh, working on extension of the ontology, both for floating platforms and on the plant side, as I mentioned, um, working on a floating reference wind plant, additional case studies, uh, incorporating more complexity and disciplines, and the reference uh, energy systems joint workshop I just mentioned. So 
Thank you for your time, everyone. Um, if you are interested in learning more at the, about the task, you can contact me. My email is there, uh, kady at d2.dk, and I'm happy to uh, answer any questions uh, about the task and our activities. Thank you.